Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another installment of the video series I'm making where I basically make videos mostly for my friends so that when everyone comes over on game night we can get right to the action. So in this episode I'm going to be teaching you how to play one of uh, my new favorite games, Viticulture, the strategic game of winemaking designed by... Jamie Stegmeier and Alan Stone, uh, put out by Stonemeyer Games. So, uh, Viticulture is a game all about making wine. And this is the game board. You, There are action spaces all over here. And the main gist of this game is to make wine and sell wine to gain victory points. Um, these little tokens here, these are called your corks. Uh, I have set up a three-player game, player one, player two, player three. Here are the corks that indicate their score. Everyone starts right here. As soon as one person can get their cork to 20 points or more, you win. So, how does the game work? Well, it is considered a worker placement game, meaning uh, everyone is going to have these little guys right here. Uh, they're called workers and on your turn you're basically going to be picking up one of these workers and just putting them on the board somewhere and wherever you put them on the board in these spaces here you can see there's outlined yellow spaces and outlined blue spaces all over the board uh, wherever you put them a certain action will take place and you're going to use those actions to harvest fields, because everyone has their own little player pad here, uh, pu putting grapes in your in your fields. Oh, let's get that in focus. You have three fields to work with. Uh, you'll be harvesting your fields in your crush pads. You have red wine, or I'm sorry, red grapes and white grapes. You'll be transferring these grapes over into your cellar. Uh, you have a small cellar, a medium cellar, and a large cellar. You start the game with only a small cellar, and then from the cellar, you will sell that wine to gain victory points. So, how do you figure out what you need to do? Well, in this game, I actually think it makes most sense to explain what happens in sort of reverse order. Uh, so I'm going to sort of explain the last thing you do first, because that sort of puts everything in context. So... To gain victory points, the easiest way to do that is by taking one of your workers and uh, putting him on this winter space over here called uh, fill a wine order. The purple rectangle represents uh, these purple cards that you'll be getting, and these purple cards are wine orders. We'll just take a look at one really quick here. Like for instance, let's get it into focus. Uh, this wine order wants a level 8 um, blush wine. And if you fill that wine order, you will gain 4 victory points. And also, when you sell wine, you make a little money. So at the end of the season, you will gain 1 lira, which is, this takes place in Italy. So instead of dollars, they call them lira. So, <clears throat> how do you do that? You have one of those cards in your hand. You have the appropriate wine that it wants in your cellar. Like right here's that level 8. If you remember, we saw that symbol on that card just a second ago. You have that level 8 blush wine. And that's indicated by these cool little glass beads that cover up the various types of wines you might have. So you've got that in your cellar. You put a worker on the fill a wine order spot. You discard that card, and you would gain, in this case, those four points. Okay, great. That's how you score points. But how do you get those wine order cards? Well, that's another action. And that action is this action right here. Uh, basically, draw a wine order. So on your turn, if you don't have any wine order cards in your hand, and you have some wine that you want to sell, you might... Uh, Put a worker on this space here, 
And the result of putting that worker there is you get to draw a line order, okay? Now, you'll note that on all of these spaces, there's three available spots. Depending on the number of players playing, uh, that'll tell you how many spaces there are at each action. For instance, in a two-player game, you only are allowed to take this first empty slot. You pretend that these other two are not here. In a three- and four-player game, the first two spots are available, so two people could take that action in any given turn. And then a five- or six-player game, all three of these are available. Um, also, with every single action space on the board, we'll look at one over here. Here's where you can sell some grapes. Um, there's two action spaces that are just sort of blank, and then the action space in the middle will always have some type of bonus. So you get to do the regular action, sell a grape token, and if you take this one in the middle, you get a bonus action. Here you would get one extra victory point for doing that. But we'll cover that in more detail uh, in just a little bit. So, we sell our wine by filling wine orders by putting a worker there. We pick up the wine orders by putting a worker in this space over here. Um, but how do we get that wine? Well, uh, you have to make wine. Uh, throughout the course of play, down here on your player board, you might have grapes in your crush pad. Okay, so as you have grapes that have been crushed, here's a, a level 5 white grape. You could take the action right here make up to two wine tokens. All right, so, well, let's, for, for argument's sake, let's say that you had a level three red grape and a level five white grape, and then you took your worker and you put him right here. Well, let's make two wine tokens. The act of doing that means I take the level five white grape and I slide it on over to the level five white wine. You can see the top row is red wines, middle row is white wines, the third row, which is a little shorter, is the blushes, and then finally way down here at the bottom are the sparkling wines. So we move that one over, and the action says we can move up to two, so we will take this level three red and make that a level three red wine. So we have now completed that action. Um, backing up even further, well, how do we get those tokens there on the crush pad in the first place? Well, you're going to have um, grapes in your fields. Everyone has three fields that they can play with here. And you'll be picking up these uh, uh, vine cards along the way that you'll be planting in your fields. So. If you have this vine card, in this case this is a, a Pinot vine card, and you take the action harvest one field, well, that means if you harvest this field, you now have one red crush pad grape and one white crush pad grape. So if I took that action, I'd harvest that field, and lo and behold, I get to take one of these glass beads, there's my level one red, and there is my level one white that came straight from that card right there by taking that action, harvest one field. You'll see the bonus of this action is plus one. That means if you're the first one there and you take that middle option, you get to harvest two of your fields. All right, so that's how we take grapes from our field to our crush pad, to our cellar, and then fill the wine order, sell it to make some money and, more importantly, victory points. But where do these cards come from? Well, everybody is going to start the game with one of these cards in hand, and it's going to be this card right here, the Pino card. Um, and the way you get it into your field from your hand is with another action. Now, every action we've talked about so far has been, as I back up here, 
on this half of the board, and you'll notice all the action spaces, oh, excuse me, action spaces are sort of bluish. Okay, that's because this half of the board is considered the winter. This half of the board over here, with all the yellowish action spaces everywhere, is considered the summer. And every round of the game is actually divided up into two halves. You, uh, well, technically four, but two main halves. Um, you're going to take some summer actions and some winter actions. But no one's allowed to take any winter actions until everyone has passed during the summer phase. But the trick is, you only have a certain number of workers. You only start the game with three. You can pick up more along the way. But you only have three workers to place among all the summer actions and all the winter actions combined. So you might need to do some things in the summer, but then you might want to pass early and save some of your workers so that when you do the winter phase, you have more actions that you can take in the winter. So that's a, a fun little quirk to the strategy of this game is balancing how much action do I want to do in the summer versus how much action do I want to do in the winter because they're very different uh, opportunities that you can take in each half of a round. So back to uh, the grapes. Well, how do we get, where did my vine card go? How, this, you know, we start with these in our hand how do we get them from our hand and, and plant them in our field? Well, as with everything in a worker placement game, you are going to place a worker on this action spot right here. Plant one vine card. So if I take that spot, I get to plant a vine card. If I'm the first one there in a three and four player game or higher, I probably want to jump on that middle one so that I can plant two vine cards. All right. Um, there is a, a variant that says you're not allowed oops, to occupy this middle bonus space unless you can actually fulfill the bonus. Meaning, let's say I have one vine card in my hand, but the next player has two, and I know that they want to plant both of them. I could sort of be a jerk and take that middle space even though I can't plant two vine cards because I only have one in my hand, but that would prevent the next player from taking advantage of the bonus. Um, a variant that a lot of people online actually say is a better, more strategic way to play is to say you're not allowed to block this unless you can actually fulfill the bonus space. So uh, that's how I usually like to play. So by putting a worker there, you take uh, one of these vine cards that are up in your hand and you say, I'm planting a vine. And now one of your three fields has a vine of Pinot in it. All right, so you plant the vine. You uh, harvest the field that gets them down into the crush pads. Then you make wine that takes the beads from the crush pads over to the cellars. And then you sell the wine to make points. All right, so, but... How do we get those cards into our hand to begin with? Well, besides the one that everybody starts with, uh, there's another action space that you can take in the summer. Um, right there. Uh, draw a vine card. The little uh, green triangle represents the vine cards. There's a stack to draw from there. So instead of uh, planting, maybe you don't have any vine cards, you want to draw a vine card. And of course, you could always take the bonus action that lets you draw two vine cards into your hand. So I go there, and then I would just reach up here, and you know, I draw a new vine card into my hand. And here's the Cabernet Sauvignon, which uh, when you harvest this grape, you actually would get a level four crushed grape into your crush pad. So that's pretty powerful. Now you'll notice up at the top here. Um, are two grayed out, weird looking shapes. We'll talk about those in a second. Those represent buildings that you must have before you can um, harvest this grape. So you're going to be drawing vine cards by taking that action there. Then you will plant those vine cards so that you can get your fields to have vines in them. 
ta-da, right there. Uh, after that, uh, assuming that you have drawn a an grape, or I'm sorry, a wine order card uh, by taking that action right there, you can then harvest a field so that you take grapes from here and bring them down into your crush pad. Now, when you do that, you do not discard your vines. Just like in real life, uh, when you harvest grapes off of a vine, um, the vine stays. So a lot of people, uh, particularly gamers, have an impulse to, okay, I take the action to bring grapes from here down here, so that means this card goes away. No, no, not in this game. Uh, th this is permanent. Um, this will always be there. Uh, there is a, a, an advanced action you can take that we'll talk about where you can get rid of it if you don't like it and replace it with a, a different one. But it's very thematic that, you know, once you have a vine, taking the grapes off does not kill the vine. So, harvest the field, take the crushed grapes, make wine, and then sell that wine. And that's sort of the flow of the game. Now, there are other things going on, though, that make the game really interesting. Uh, for instance, um, there is a, a money component to this game. Almost all of the actions that you take are going to cost you something. Uh, you can't just do something for free, um, at least nothing of value, and you have to somehow generate money to pay for these actions. Uh, for instance, uh, one action you can take in the winter is you can train another worker. So like I said, you start the game with only having three workers, which makes you very limited in the what you can do. Well, you can train more workers, uh, up to three more, but in order to train a worker, you have to pay four lira. So you've got to have uh, four lira to get that extra worker. Well, there's ways you can get that extra lira. For instance, this action space over here, if you gave a tour of your winery, you gain two lira. See there in the lower right? And if you're the first person to take this action, you take that middle space with the bonus, you get a bonus of one lira, so three lira to give a tour. That's one way to generate money. Um, other things that you can do. Uh, right here, build one structure. The, that's those buildings I was talking about earlier. Um, I'll show you over here on the white player board. Um, you have all these structures. Uh, here in the back, you can see the three extra workers that you can train. But all of these things, these are all structures that you can build that will help you uh, make wine faster, more efficiently, make wine more valuable, stuff like that. Well, in order to build a structure, you have to take this action right here. And if you're the first person to take that action, the bonus here is you get to do it for one dollar cheaper. Because all of the structures, if we uh, take a look at the player board here, uh, for instance, uh, here's the cottage. If you want to build the cottage, it'll cost you four lira. Uh, here's the windmill. If you want to build the windmill, it will cost you five lira. So getting that uh, one dollar discount by taking that first action, or the middle action, but usually the first person to go there will take it, you know, can be advantageous. Um, another way that you can make a little bit of money is instead of selling wine, you can sell your grapes. So, if we go to take a look at our crush pad here, um, here we have a level one red grape and a level one white grape. Uh, let's say I just need some cash. Well, you look here in the middle. If you sell grapes from this top row, you can get one lira. So oh, I'm getting rid of that because I took the uh, I took the sell one grape token action. So I just sold a grape. Guess what? I gain one lira. Yay! Um, also, if you're to the bonus there, you'll get one victory point for selling grapes. Uh, if you take the first one. And finally, um, there's a couple more action spaces. We, if you're just a, a last way to get money, there's this sort of giant action space in the middle of the board. This is available in both the summer and the winter. This is basically you, you went for a ride on the ox on the ox cart 
and you just gained a buck. Um, that's sort of a, an action space, like if everything else is full, you don't have anything else you can do, you can always gain a dollar or gain a lira by taking this action space here. Now, there's um, two more things we need to talk about, or actually two halves of one thing, and that's these cards up here. We have Summer Visitor Cards and Winter Visitor Cards. These are uh, special powers, basically. If you have a Summer Visitor Card, that will allow you to do, usually, one of these Summer Actions in a more efficient way, or a cheaper way, or it'll allow you to do a double action, or they, you know, sort of bend the rules in some way during the summer. Um, here's an example of a summer action card. Let's see if we can get that to come into focus. The horticulturist. Uh, you can plant one vine even if you don't have the required structures. Or you can uproot and discard two vines to gain three victory points. Well, that's cool, but you know what are they talking about their required structures? Well, remember our Pino card? Uh, it had that little symbol up there, uh, right here, this gray thing. That is called the trellis. And any vine cards that have any of these gray symbols in the corner, that means you actually can't plant these vines unless you've built that structure. So, if we look over here, here is the trellis. So in order to plant the Pinot card, you have to have this trellis already built. Well, how do you do that? Well, you'd have to take this action, build one structure, then you look on your player board and you find the trellis. Oh, there it is up in the corner. And the trellis says, I cost two lira. So I would grab my two lira, goodbye, and now I can place my trellis right here on my board so now I am allowed to plant the Pinot grape because the requirement is, if I can get that to focus again, you have to have the trellis. Well, there it is. I have the trellis. So I can take the plant action and plant the Pinot card. And there you go. Um, so just like uh, but if I had the horticulturist that we talked about earlier, um, that says I could plant one vine even if I don't have the required structures. So, during my turn, I could play a summer visitor card. Let's say I really want to plant a vine, but I don't have that trellis. Well, if I go on the summer side here and Right there is the spot where it says play one summer visitor card, the yellow rectangle. So I could take that action space, play the horticulturist, and you play them just by discarding them face up right there, and then I could plant that Pinot card even if I did not have the trellis already. Um, the winter visitor cards work the same way. Uh, They're going to give you basically cheats, rule bends, um, and you take that action space right there, you play that card, and uh, you do whatever the card says. Um, so, a uh, couple more things real quick. Um, during the summer, as people are taking their actions, you know, or as soon as someone, if you run out of workers, or if you still have workers left and you just want to pass, you can just say, I pass, and, you know, I'm going to save my workers for the winter. As soon as everyone has passed, then, well, what comes in between summer and winter? Fall. During the fall, um, just one quick thing happens. Every single person in turn order can choose either one summer visitor card or one winter visitor card. Um, just your choice, you get to take the top one off the off the deck so that you have the ability to uh, get an, an advantage or an edge on some future turn. Uh, that's the fall, so you know you do you do summer actions that sort of 
help you plant vines and get some money, um, maybe sell some grapes, summer uh, visitors, and then everybody passes, and then everyone gets to choose either a summer or a winter visitor card in the fall. So we've done summer, fall, and then winter, whatever workers you have left over that you did not spend in the summer, because they stay on the board, uh, you can play workers over here that will allow you to get wine orders, uh, harvest fields, make wine, sell wine, or maybe train more workers so you have more actions on future turns. Um, and then at the end of the winter, um, and this is great because they have this thing printed right on the board, um, you age your grapes and wine tokens, which is a really cool concept. So at the end of each round, everyone looks at their player board, they look at all their grapes, all their wine, and for free, because wine and grapes age, you just slide it up one level. So here's a level three, becomes a level four, here's a level five, it becomes a level six. That just happens at the end of every round. So you can sort of plan ahead. If you've got a, uh, a wine order card that requires like a high level wine, oh yeah, and then this sparkling would also age to nine. Um, you know, you can plan ahead because you know all of your wine and all of your grapes are going to age at the end of every year. Um, then what do you do at the end of the year after you age the grape and wine tokens? Well, you collect residual payments. Well, what does that mean? Well, remember on our example um, wine order card right here? Let me get this to come into focus. They want a level 8 sparkling wine to get four victory points, and then they have this one lira with the little arrows going around it. That means you're also going to collect um, one dollar at the end of the year. So when you fulfill this card and discard it right there, uh, you would take your color wine bottle in this little residual payments wheel and just move it up to the number one because it had one lira worth of residual payments. And I know that's not in focus. Uh, well, trust me. It said one lira. You remember. And so th that way, if you play another one this round, you know, maybe this moves from one to two, two to three. As you fill more and more wine orders, this can move around, um, and then you collect that money at the end of the year. Then you have to discard down to seven total cards. Um, so you can't carry more than seven cards going into the next year or round of the game. And that's total cards between vine cards, summer visitors, winter visitors, uh, wine orders. No more than seven. Then you uh, rotate the first player counterclockwise. They have this little um, grape token. Uh, you just give that to the first player. Um, so at the end of the round, if uh, the blue player was the first player, uh, you're going to rotate that counterclockwise. So, uh, let's see, clockwise would be that way, so it would go over here. And the yellow player uh, would get to uh, choose first the next round. Now, coming up to what I think is the last aspect of the game um, is turn order. Um, and that's this track right over here. Um, whoever starts the game with the little grape first player token, um, you're not actually necessarily the first player. You get first pick at turn order for the year. And here's what that means. Let's say that the blue player here has the first player marker. That means uh, you're going to come to this little track and the blue player is going to grab his blue uh, rooster and he can put that rooster anywhere on these numbers 1 through 7. Now, if you really want to go first this year, you would put it on number 1 because no one can go earlier than number 1. But you'll notice to the right of the numbers are little things uh, like bonuses. This is in the wrong spot. So if you go first, that is your entire bonus. See, that's blank over there. You don't get a bonus for going first. If you choose to go second, that means right at the start of the year, you get to draw a vine card. 
So that's another way to get a vine card. Um, instead of taking the action on the board, you could just put your rooster marker at the number two position, and then you get to draw a vine card. If you take the number three position, go a little bit later, you get to draw a wine order card. That's the purple ones. So there's a way to get wine order if you don't want to take an action to do it. You take position number four, you get a dollar, or one lira. You take position number five, you get to draw a summer visitor card or a winter visitor card. So ways to sort of cheat the game and get an advantage. You take the sixth position, you just automatically get a victory point. Pretty cool. And finally, if you opt to go last, which, you know, in a worker placement game, turn order is always important. Uh, the earlier you go in turn order, you know, you have your pick of the litter. Um, and you can block other players from taking certain actions. So if you're going really early, you have many more options. But if you choose to go later, these bonuses get progressively better. All the way to the best bonus, if you choose to go last, this year only, you get to take this worker here, and you have an extra worker for the whole year. Um, so let's say, you know, the blue player really wants that extra worker, so they will take the extra worker, add it to their supply. Uh, the white player uh, wants some type of summer visitor card, maybe, and the yellow player really wants a vine. Okay, well, that means for this year, the order of placing workers is going to be yellow, white, blue. Okay, so just because position number one was skipped, uh, that just means whoever took position number two will go first. And you do that at the beginning of every year, uh, where the person that has the little grape token, they get to place uh, their uh, rooster token first, and then it goes clockwise as to... Uh, who puts the, their rooster, you know, they get to choose next. Um, next thing, oh, you may have noticed that uh, your starting workers, two of them are sort of normal sized and one is really, really big. Uh, that's because the really, really big guy is called the grande worker. The grande worker uh, is sort of an override worker. So let's say throughout the course of the game, uh, the blue player planted a field, and then the yellow player, he also planted a field. So in a three-player game, remember we ignore this third space in a uh, three and four-player game. So that means there's no more spots available to plant fields. And maybe the white player really wants to plant a field. That's what the grande worker is for. Um, once per year, you can place your grande worker. And the grande worker is so big, he can actually take an action that is already full. Okay, but you only get one of them. So if someone's trying to block you out, uh, you can still take an action um, with your grande worker, but you can only you know nudge your way in of a blocked out action once per year. Now, if no one has blocked you out of an action you want to do, you can still use the grande worker as a regular worker, just to take a regular action. But that's what the big one is for. And I'll put these back now. Um, what else? Oh, I think the last thing I need to cover is uh, what all of these uh, structures do. So we already talked about the trellis. Um, certain um, vines uh, will require a trellis. So you have to pay your two bucks to build the trellis and put it right there. Um, other vines might require an irrigation symbol. So the irrigation symbol is, uh, is that thing right there. So you pay your three bucks and then you can put your irrigation structure on the board. And some vines will actually require both. They'll say, <coughs> excuse me, you can't plant a vine unless you have the trellis and the irrigation. So, you know, you may need to invest uh, in building some of those structures. Um, also, you could build the windmill for five lira. Now, that's pretty expensive, but once you have the windmill, and we'll just put that right there, uh, whenever you plant a vine, you gain a victory point. So normally planting a vine is just a means to get grapes, but once you build the windmill, every time you plant a vine, victory points. Pretty cool. 
Uh, we can take a look at the cottage. Uh, once you build the cottage, um, each fall you get to draw an extra summer visitor or winter visitor card because you have a cottage so more visitors want to visit you. Remember in the fall everyone draws one or the other. Well if you have a cottage you get to draw two cards of your choice. Um, tasting room. Let's put our tasting room token right over there. Once you have the tasting room when you give a, a vineyard tour, if you remember giving a tour is a way to get money, but if you give a tour at a winery that has a tasting room, you also get victory points because people think that you're awesome. Uh, but you'll notice um, that's a very expensive structure to have. Uh, six lira to basically get victory points and money for giving a tour. Uh, pretty impressive. Um, next we can talk about the the yoke and you actually put this yoke structure it only costs two bucks um, the yoke is an interesting structure because once you've built a yoke this is now considered an action space in the summer or winter that only you can take so you could take your worker and actually put him oops put him right on the yoke and instead of on the board and that action allows you to uproot one vine or harvest one field so harvesting one field we already understand uh, that's that winter action of uh, taking grapes out of your vines and putting them down into your crush pad if that area is completely full well you could take this action on your board to harvest that field or you could use it to uproot a vine. What does that mean? Well, let's say you've got this pinot in your field and it's just not doing it for you. You don't think it's a good investment for you. You could put a worker here on the yoke and goodbye pinot. That gets discarded up there. And the last structures of the game. We've talked about these cellars and how um, grapes from your crush pad when you make wine they come over to the corresponding spot in the cellar well down at the bottom we talked about this at the beginning there's a small cellar and a medium cellar and a large cellar and you may have guessed it you're not allowed to have any wine in the medium cellar until you have purchased the medium cellar structure. Cost you four bucks, but once you build it, now your wines can get more valuable. They can get up to level six. Um, and then the same principle applies for the large seller. You pay six bucks, and then you can put the large seller token on there, and that indicates that your entire seller is now open. Uh, you can have wines anywhere. Uh, lastly, this little key here. Um, if you want to make a red wine or a white wine, it's pretty straightforward. A level three white grape becomes a level three white wine, and same principle with the red. But if you want to make a blush, which is this row here, you just look here, you have to combine a white and a red grape to make one blush wine. So if you want to make like a level six blush, you would have to combine, say, a level 3 red and a level 3 white, or a level 2 white with a level 4 red. You get the idea. They just have to add up to 6 to create this level 6 blush. And then the sparklings work the same way, but here you need a white and two reds um, to create a sparkling. So you'd have to have at least two reds and one white, and you take them all off the board and only one little glass bead would come over here to become a sparkling wine. Um, anything else? Uh, the rest is uh, just sort of minute details that you can figure out as you play, but hopefully that's at least of a basic overview um, of viticulture. So if you watch this video and if you're coming over for a game night and someone says, hey, I want to play that. Hopefully you at least have a base understanding. You can just grab your player board, 
get some Lyra, start making wine, and just jump right in and start having fun. All right, well, contact me with any questions, and uh, good luck.